I had, I, I might go back a stage actually, because in my post dip I designed an operating theatre table, which is, a, uh, you know, in the same vein of things. This was a hydraulic one instead of a mechanical one, and it was done in conjunction with the late Dr. Jim Patrick uh, in the Royal Infirmary in, in Glasgow. But it just it was a student project, it, was, it wasn't in fact made, but it was in the medical field, uh, in fact. Um, I didn't have much more to do with the medical stuff other than in the analytic stuff. I did a lot of work for Joyce Lobo at Gates Head, who did sort of blood analysis and things of that sort, machines for that. did quite a lot of stuff for them in that. And uh, for Flow Laboratories at Irvine, again on the an analyst, uh, analyzing bodily fluids and whatnot, automatic machines, and quite some interesting stuff for them. They were very good to work with, as were Joyce Lobo. I mean, it, it was a great time uh, in many ways because I was finding out about how to be an industrial designer. And I have to admit, the guys at Kelvin's educated me more than anybody. They were smashing people. Some of them died rather early on. But the experimental part of Kelvin's was great. One man has never been given the credit, though. I mean, apart from Tom, who was overshadowed, I think, rather disgracefully by Ian Donald, uh, Tom is the hero, in my view, because he gave him the tools. Uh, but the man who allowed Tom to do that was W.T. Slater, the managing director, uh, deputy managing director of Calvin Hughes, who was up here. And he got the money going and kept the project going when there was all the reason that you'd, well, if the money men had really been in charge, it wouldn't have happened. And uh, people like John Fleming were allowed, you know, young engineers to develop the whole thing. And it was that atmosphere in Kelvin Hughes. Um, I'm sure Lord Kelvin would have been proud of it. Uh, and sad that when it collapsed in 1966 and the whole thing was shut down, um, that was one sadness I began to realize you know, that things were never forever. <laughs> I did end up working for about 42 different companies in the UK, both England and Scotland, and in America. Uh, 